Today we're moving on to curl divergence and surface integrals. Just a recap of what we've done so far. So far all we've looked at are line integrals. All right? So we saw line integrals of a function. We saw line integrals of a vector field. And with a line integral of a vector field, we, sh we, we showed that it could be worked out in a number of ways. If the vector field is conservative, then you can use a fundamental theorem of line integrals. And then we also saw that you could use Green's theorem for line integrals of vector fields, providing that the curve is closed, all right, and bounded. That's the only time you can use Green's theorem. Today, we are going to go into surface integrals. But before we look into surface integrals, surface integrals is much like line integrals. You'll see the difference in a while. I need to teach you something about curl and divergence. Okay, so curl. <coughs> curl and divergence are operations on vector fields using applications such as fluid flow, electricity, magnetism, and so on. What is curl? It measures rotation or spinning effect. So if you view the vector field as a flow of a fluid or gas or wind or something like that, then the curl of that vector field is a tendency of the particles to rotate about an axis. And this axis is a vector called curl of F. Okay? It's a point, a curl of F is the vector that points along the axis of rotation. How do you calculate curl of F? Curl of F is the cross product of del and the vector field. So it's this determinant. And I've just given you the formula. So that's the formula for curl of F. What is divergence? It's the tendency of a fluid or gas to diverge from a point. So if F is the velocity field of the flowing fluid, that is what div F, which is divergence of F, is. Yes. I have switched it. You mean the negative here? Yeah. You have a very good point. So he's asking, this is the determinant. So remember, it's supposed to be minus j. So I have flipped it. I have, I have negated it inside the parentheses. Okay? And just let me just work, just in case, let me explain how I got this formula. That's a very good question you asked. So let's go over the determinant. So it's i times, so you block this off. So it's partial of R with respect to Y minus partial of Q with respect to Z minus, which is what I have, minus J, block this out, partial of R with respect to X. So you see some minus here. Um, minus partial of P with respect to Z, which is what is here. And the last one is K times partial of Q with respect to X minus partial P with respect to Y. Okay, so that's how I got this formula. What is the formula for div F? Is the dot product of del and F, which is when you work it out, it's the sum of the three first partials. Partial P with respect to X plus partial Q with respect to Y plus partial R with respect to Z. So later on, we're going to show the uses of this, but let's do some calculations first of all. Find the curl and divergence of this vector field. Okay, um, let's write on what P, Q, and R are. So P equals the first function, x e to the y. Q is z sine y. And R is x, y, natural log of z. Now we need, let me just write out the, um, formula for curl again. <coughs> curl of F is equal to partial R partial Y minus partial Q partial Z times I. My, well, I had a plus, right? So plus partial P partial Z 
minus partial r partial x plus oh that's a j plus partial q partial x minus partial p partial y times k just check that this is what i have on the opposite page so we're good to go okay so let's find these partials partial r with respect to what oops partial r with respect to y is x natural log of z minus partial q with respect to z is sine y that's i plus partial p with respect to z is zero minus partial r with respect to x is so that's a minus y ln z times j plus Partial Q with respect to X is 0. Minus partial P with respect to Y is X e to the Y times K. So we just make it slim simplify it. X ln Z minus sine Y I minus Y ln Z times J minus X e to the Y times K. Okay. So that's curl. Div. Div of F. Let me write down the formula again. Partial P with respect to X plus partial Q with respect to Y plus partial R with respect to Z. Okay, so the first one is just x e to the, I'm sorry, that's not right, sorry. This is just e to the y. Partial q with respect to y is z cosine y. And the last one, partial r with respect to z is x y over z. Okay, so you need to be able to do this when we move on to um, the next lecture. So we, it's important that you learn this. All right, I think the next one is your turn. Yeah, try these, okay? So let me put the formula again for you. Curl. F is partial R, partial Y, minus partial Q, partial Z, plus partial P, partial Z, minus partial R, partial X, G, I forgot the I, plus partial Q, partial X, minus partial p partial y k and then div is partial p partial x plus partial q partial y plus partial r partial z
Okay, let's get your working. What's the first component? dr dy x minus next one. Oh, that's all there. Oh, so it wasn't last one. Don't tell me it's zero. Ay, ay, ay. Okay. And this one. One. Okay, that's three. So again, remember, div gives a quantity. So it measures the rate of flow inward or outward from a point. While curl is a vector it points in the direction of the axis of rotation it measures spinning or rotation effect so therefore if you are in a windstorm and let's say f is the vector field that measures the windstorm that describes the windstorm the curl of f would be the tendency of something within that windstorm to rotate okay so it points in the direction of the axis of rotation all right just some i think just some theorems about curl and then we'll move on the div of the curl of f is zero we don't want to prove that so curl of f is a vector if you take the divergence of the curl of f you gotta get zero the curl of del f is also zero and in this third point you can also use it for to show that a vector field is conservative if it's conservative then the curl is equal to zero okay so that's just theorems i just put in there yes div is a scalar it's just a quantity it measures rates of change okay rate of change of flow okay all right, so now let's move on. So we'll go into that again a little later. But let's move on to... We're going to start with surface integrals. But before I go into surface integrals, we need to look at parametric surfaces. Oops. So in the past, when we looked at parametric surfaces, we only had one parameter, right? So when we looked at a curve, when we were doing line integrals, the curve C had one parameter, B, T, theta, whatever it is, right? That's line integrals. When you deal with surface integrals, you are looking at, it's similar to line integrals, but you are looking for more than, you're looking at more, more than one parameter. So let's look at such surfaces. The set of points X, Y, and Z in R3 Okay, so again, in line integrals, we're in R2. Here in R3, X is given with parameters U and V, similarly Y and Z. And this is called a parametric surface. Now let's try to identify some of these surfaces. What do they look like? So before, when we were doing line integrals, and I gave you, if X is cosine T and Y is sine T, you know that this is a circle. All right? So let us see, let us see if we can identify surfaces given these parametric equations. Let's look at this. R, so the surface equation is given by R at uv, 2 sine ui plus 3 co cosine uj plus vk, and u lies between 0 and 2 pi, and v lies between 0 and 2. Let's identify the surface. So first of all, Let's write out the three parametric equations. So the first one, x, is 2 sine u. The next one, y, is 3 cosine u. The last one, z, is v. All right, now whenever you see sine and cosine in any parametric equation, you should think of the trigonometric identity sine squared plus cosine squared is 1 okay that is how you're going to find the surface so for for both of these I'm gonna find sine u which is x over 2 and then cosine u which is y over 3 
So we know that sine squared u plus cosine squared u is 1, which means that x squared over 4 plus y squared over 9 equals 1. Now, what, what type of equation is that? That's not a circle. It's an ellipse. So we're going to call this, these are ellipses in the xy plane, right? But we are in 3D. So let's see what the z equals v is saying. So z equals v implies um, that z, well, v lies between 0 and 2, right? So z lies between 2 and 0. So that means you are going to take these ellipses, the surface is such that you take these ellipses and move it throughout the z axis between 0 and 2, all right? So I'm going to say move ellipses throughout z axis for z between 2 and 0 and so what you're going to get is something called an elliptical cylinder because it's only moved throughout 0 and 2 okay so I'm going to say surface is elliptical cylinder x squared over 4 plus y squared over 9 equals 1 for z between 2 and 0 okay so that's the first one Pardon me? You should be able to graph these in your calculus. We'll definitely grab the elliptic, the, the cylinder x squared over 4 plus y squared over 9 equals 1, and you'd have to intersect it with z equals 0 and z equals 2. Got it? Yes, yeah, so you'd have to plot like 3. Let's go on to another one. Number two. So this is your equation for the surface, and v lies between zero and two. And I don't know why I didn't say what u lies between. So let us assume. I wonder if there was anything for u. Mm, maybe. Um. Let's assume that u lies between 0 and 1. Hmm. I'll see. Okay, let's write out the parametric equations. x equals 1 plus 2u plus v. As a first, let's call it number 1. y equals u minus v, number 2 z equals 3 plus v, number 3. Okay, now we want to identify the surface. We want to eliminate the parameters. That's what we're trying to do, right? Eliminate u and v. So just imagine we are solving these three equations. So what I would do is to try to first eliminate an easy one. I think I can eliminate v very easily by adding pairs of equations. If I add 1 and 2, I can eliminate v. I will get x plus y equals 3u plus 1. And then, if I add 1 and 3, one and, sorry, 2 and 3, 2 and 3, I can also eliminate v. y plus z equals u 
plus 3. Right? So now are we getting somewhere? We still have one parameter left, u. So we're going to try to eliminate u. Um, I'm going to multiply the second equation by 3. So multiply by 3. 3y plus 3z equals 3u plus 9. And then I'm going to subtract the two equations. Okay? So, um, yeah. So subtract... Subtracting, what do we get? So we have an x, good. Then you have a y minus 3y is minus 2y. Then you have a minus 3z. The three u's go, and then 1 minus 9 is minus 8. So tell me, from a previous lecture, what surface is this? We did that very, very early on in this course. What surface is that? Could be only one thing. It's a plane. So this is a plane. Do you remember what the normal vector is? Let me see if you remember that. With normal vector, you remember? 1 minus 2 minus 3. Very good. It is the coefficients of the x, y, and z. Okay? <coughs> All right. So that's um, actually finding the surface. Okay? Now, what we're going to do right now, let's see if I give you a surface... If you can write down the parametric equations, okay? So, parametrize surfaces. So, let's start with an easy one. So, you have x plus y squared plus z equals 5, and x lies between 0 and 1, y lies between negative 1 and 1. So, for something like this, what I would do is to solve for z. All right, so remember we want to know what x is what y is, and what z is. It's the surface, so you need um, two parameters. Good? So solve for z, and you will get that z is 5 minus x minus y squared. And so you already have two parameters. Let x be one of the parameters. So let x be u. Let y be another parameter. Let y be v. And so z is there for 5 minus u minus v squared. And then put the values for u. So x lies between 0 and 1. So u would also lie between 0 and 1. And y is v, so v would lie between 1 and minus 1. So that's one, one of them. So that's an easy one. Now, let's take some number 2. That's now, number 2. What kind of surface is that? x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 4. It's a sphere, right? Whenever you have to parametrize a sphere, um, the easiest thing, well, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say the easiest thing, but the best thing to use is spherical coordinates. Okay? So, in this case, so we're going to use, remember the in spherical coordinates, let me just remind you, use, this is also, this is a sphere, and what's the radius of this sphere, by the way? So we are going to use spherical coordinates, rho, theta, and phi, right? We 
What is rho, by the way? Let me see if you remember that. 2. Rho is 2. Okay. So, you may not remember... Um, I think I already gave you these parametric equations when you did spherical coordinates, so I'll just write them down. So x will be 2 cosine theta sine phi. Y would be 2 sine theta sine phi. And z would be 2 cosine phi. <coughs> And remember, what are the range of values for theta again? 2 pi. And for phi, 0 to pi. Very good. Very good. Sweet. Okay. Good. So, what I just did, I introduced you to surfaces. And I showed you how surfaces can be parametrized and how you can find the actual um, surface, describe the surface from the parametrization. All right, so now I think we're going to move on to surface integrals now. No, before surface integrals, surface area. Surface area, now, do you remember... We did surface area earlier on, some lectures ago. Let me see if you, I'm going to erase it in a little while, right? So if the surface was given as a function of x, y, right? The surface area was the, inter, the double integral over whatever it was, right? Of what? Square root of 1 plus partial x squared partial y, um, partial respect to y squared. Remember that? Right. So this was the equation where there was no parametrization. Okay? Now, what if there was a parametrization? You can use this formula that we're going to do right now. So let me take this out. So that was what you learned, that you... Now, by the way, you can still use this formula for parametrization, but it's, it's going to be a little more difficult. So let's take this out. Okay. So now, if you have the surface given in terms of parameters, U and V, this is the formula for surface area. Suppose the surface is given by this over domain D, the surface area is the double integral over D of the length of the cross product of these two partials. Good. So let's do this question. We're going to find the area of the surface with this vector equation. We're actually just going to set up the integral, okay? And then if you will, you can put it into your calculator and then you can give me the answer. All right. So we need to find partials. Now just let me say this. I'm going to write RUV in angle bracket. So that's U cosine V, U sine V, V. I find when we do that, it's easier to see. All right. Now, look at the formula. We need the partial of R with respect to U. So it's a vector. You just partially differentiate each component with respect to U. What would that be? Cosine V, good. Mm -hmm. Sine V, yes. Zero, okay. Now let's partially differentiate R with respect to V now. What is that? Minus u sine v, good. Next one. Good. u cosine v, uh huh. One. Okay. 
The next thing we have to find, look at the formula, we need to find the cross product of these two partials. So RU cross RV, so set it up. You have IJK cosine V sine V zero minus U sine V U cosine V one. And then you can put that into your calculator. You know how to do cross product now in your calculator. And you are going to get the vector sine V minus cosine V U. I hope you remember how to do that. And that looks, that looks, that doesn't look like that. So. Okay. I'll, I'll hold on a little while and make sure that this, this is the answer. So check it for me. Make sure I have the right thing, okay? And make sure that you remember how to do that too. Where's the end? Where is it? Down there at the bottom. Oh. Okay, we good? Okay. Now look at the formula. The next thing we need to find is the length of this vector. The length of what we just got. Remember how you find the length of the vector? Remind me. You haven't done that in a while, so tell me. Square root of sine squared v plus cosine squared v plus u squared, which works out to be square root of 1 plus u squared. Okay? So surface area is equal to the double integral of this 1 plus u squared. Now, if you look at the, um, the range of values for u and v, they are all, they are, it's a constants, right? So it's over a rectangle, so it doesn't matter the order. So du dv and u goes from 0 to 1, and v goes from 0 to pi. Can you just work it out and tell me what it is, please? You have it? The double integral of that. Natural log of the square root of 2 plus 1? Plus square root of 2. 2 plus 1 underneath that square root sign or the natural log of Just 2? Yeah. Oh, okay. So um, square root of 2 plus 1 plus square root of 2 times pi all over 2. Thank you. 
Okay, let's move on. Aha, uh -huh, we are moving on to surface integrals now. Surface integrals. What is a surface integral? We looked at line line integrals. We we integrated over a curve in the plane. Why do I have the in space here? That's not right. Curves in the plane. A surface integral is basically exactly what we did with line integrals. So it's to surfaces in space what a line integral is to curves in the plane. All right, so we're in 3D now. That's why they call it surface integrals. Notation. Let S be a surface and F a continuous function defined on that surface. So again, the surface is in 3D. It has two parameters in there. All right? It's X, Y, Z. Good. Curves, line integrals, the curves had just one parameter. I hope you recognize the difference. Okay? We denote the surface integral as the double integral over S, put S below here, of the function DS. All right, now we have a number of formulas to find surface integrals. So the first one we're going to look at is if the surface is given parametrically as a parameterization in terms of u and v over domain d. Then the formula is this. The surface integral of the function f over s is given by the double integral over s of the function ds is equal to the double integral over the domain d we have changed variables. So you replace, what this formula says, is that you replace x, y, and z with your parameters. So you write the function now in terms of u and v. And then you multiply by the length of the cross product of these two partials. All right? So that is the formula for that. And then the second formula, what if the surface is not given as a parametrization? What if it's just given as a function of x and y? This is the formula for the surface integral. The double integral over s of the function ds is a double integral over d again. So you rewrite, what you're trying to do is to rewrite everything in terms of x and y because it's a double integral. You cannot have z in there. So you're going to replace z with your g of x, y, and you always multiply by this. Okay, note what this is. If it was, note that if it was a double integral of only this, it would be surface area. Same thing above here. So in other words, if your function is 1, equal to 1, then you're actually finding surface area. So these two formulas, what, that's what we're going to use to find surface integrals. So we're going to do some examples, and I'm, I have to rewrite these formulas again. So you'll be able to see when you use which formula. So we're just setting up integrals, okay? Set up the integral which you value as a surface integral. So the double integral over s of x, y, z, d, s. And s is a cone given by these parametric equations. So because s is given with parametric equations, you use this formula. The double integral over s of f of x, y, z, d, s is equal to the double integral over d. Replace f with your parameters and multiply by the length of the cross product of these two vectors. And let's put the a. Okay, so that's the formula we're going to use. Why again? Because we have a parameterization 
of the surface. Okay, so shall we begin? I think the first thing we're going to do is to find this um, length of the cost product of these two partials. So first, let's find the partials. So RU is, you can write it as a vector. So it separates the, the curve or the surface RU of V is right here, the parameterization. So you just partially differentiate each of these components with respect to you. Let's see what you get. Mm, give me one minute here. This is supposed to be x equals u cosine v. Insert a u in there for me, please. u cosine v. Okay, so let's go. Let's find the partial of r with respect to u. So it would be cosine v. Next one is sine v. Next one is 1. Put it as a vector. Then can you give me the partial of r with respect to v, please, anybody? With respect to v? Negative u sine v, good. Next one. u cosine v, next one. 0, very good. Now, let's find the cross product, RU cross RV. Okay, so I'll set it up, but you can, uh, you can always put these into your calculator, okay? And when you put it into your calculator, you should get minus u cosine v, minus u sine v, and u. Just check it out. That make sure I'm correct, please. Okay. U sine V here. Yeah. Um, I got a negative. Did you put a minus J? Are you doing it from scratch or are you yeah. you doing it from scratch? So let's do it from scratch here. So that is I times that's zero minus U cosine V. Did you put a minus J? Yeah. So minus J times zero minus minus there you go minus u sine v times one so that's a plus you see oh, yeah. okay. and i'll just continue k times u cosine squared v plus u sine squared v okay let's move on now find the length we going according to the formula length so that's the square root of u squared cosine squared v plus u squared sine squared v plus u squared. Now you need to simplify that, right? It can be simplified. The first two terms work out to be u squared plus u squared. So that's the square root of 2u squared, which is square root of 2 times u. Okay? So that's the one that will take the most work. Good. And then, let's set up the integral. Or even before that, what is our function? Let me go back up. X, Y, Z. Let us write this in terms of U and V. So take X, Y, Z. Right? And put the values of X, Y, and Z in there. So that is U cosine V 
times u sine v times u, which is equal to u cubed cosine v sine v. Okay, we're ready to set up. So, the surface integral becomes the double integral. Okay, whatever we got for the x, y, z. So, that's u cubed cosine v sine v multiplied by the length of the cross product square root of 2u. Now, I think it's over a rectangle, is it? Yes, it's all constants for the... Um, the range of values, so the order is unimportant. du dv, u goes from 0 to 1, v goes from 0 to pi over 2. Done. We're just setting up. Okay. Let's move on. Number two. Why does this look so familiar? Is that the same? Oh, no. There's a slight difference. Okay. We want to find the surface integral, the double integral over S. Y ds, where s is the helicoid with vector equation as follows, and you see the range of values of u and v. Let me write the equation again, the formula. x, y, z, ds, the double integral over d of f of r of u, v, times the length of r, u, cross r, v, v, a. Okay, tell me, we're doing this together, what should I do first? Partials. So can somebody, one person give me the partial of R with respect to U, please? Cosine V, sine V, zero, good. Can somebody give me the partial of R now with respect to V? Hmm? Negative u sine v, yes. U cosine v, one, beautiful. What's the next step? Cross product. Cross product. R u cross R v. Put that into your calculator and tell me what you get, please. Sine v minus cosine v u. Very good. Mm -hmm. Now, what's the next step? Find the length. So, the length of r u cross r v. Who would like to give me the working for that, please? Mm -hmm. oh, uh huh. <coughs> Plus u squared. And what does that simplify to? Square root of what? 1 plus u squared. Okay. Good. So we have this part. We're almost there. What's the next step? You want to integrate. Okay, but what do we do with this y? Okay, right. So the double integral over s of y ds is equal to the double integral. What is our y? Um, u sine v. So u sine v times the integral of 1 plus u squared. 
again the range of values are all constant so the order is unimportant u goes from 0 to 1 v goes from 0 to pi can you imagine integrating this yeah on your calculator I actually have the, the answer let me give it to you that's 2 thirds times 2 square root 2 minus 1 so something like that you put that into your calculator okay any questions okay Now look at this. Number three. The double integral over S of x squared y z ds. S is a part of the plane z. What is that? <laughs> I think, oh gosh, this is supposed to be a one. <laughs> Oh my, I don't know how I... <laughs> it's a 1. <laughs> Z is equal to 1 plus 2x plus 3y that lies above the rectangle, 0, 3 cross 0, 2. Okay? When you have rectangles like that, the x would be between 0 and 3, the y between 0 and 2. Now, look at the surface. Eh? There is no parameterization there. I would not waste my time and parameterize the surface. I mean, you know how to do that, but I wouldn't do it. So you would use the other formula to find the surface integral. So let me write this other formula. It's the double integral over S of F dS is equal to the double integral over D. And you're going to write F um, X, Y, and replace the z or write the z in terms of x and y and then you multiply by 1 plus partial z with respect to x squared plus partial z with respect to y squared de okay so that's what you're going to use again i use this formula because the surface was not parameterized all right, shall we do this? Okay, the first thing I think we should do is to find the square root thing. So let's find the partials, right? So z equals 1 plus 2x plus 3y. Partial z with respect to x is 2. Partial z with respect to y is 3. So therefore, the square root of 1 plus partial z with respect to x squared plus partial z with respect to y squared is 1 plus 4 plus 9, which is square root 14. Okay. Now... So we've done this part here. Let's do this part. So take this function that you have to integrate. x squared y z. And we write it. Because it's a double integral, we cannot have z in the integrand. So we have to replace z with our, our function or our equation up there. So x squared y times 1 plus 2x plus 3y. That's what it is. Which is equal to x squared y plus 2x cubed y plus 3x squared y squared. And so we are ready. So... The double integral over S of x squared y z ds is equal to is a double integral of what we just found x squared y plus 2x cubed y 
plus 3x squared y squared. We need to multiply this by the square root, so that's square root 14. It is over a rectangle, so um, we can put dx dy, it does not matter. x goes from 0 to 3, y goes from 0 to 2. Okay, and then when you put that into your calculator, you get 171 times square root 14. Any questions? Okay. Why don't you try this one? This is a similar one to what we just did. So let me write out the formula of f ds is so you re we write f in terms of x and y so x y g of x y times the square root of 1 plus partial z respect to x squared plus partial y respect to x squared d okay Try it on your own. So find the partials first. Do the square root thing. And only set up the integral. No, hold on. You can evaluate that. It's quite easy. So evaluate it fully. You can do that. And then we'll do it together. Let's do it. Partial z with respect to x is 2. Partial z with respect to y is 3. So this square root thing ends up being what? Square root 14. Very good. So as I said, there's no, the integrand has no z in there, so you can go right into integrating it. You have no replacement of z to do. So that's x squared plus y squared, and I would put that square root 14 outside, okay? And dx dy, it doesn't matter which one, 0 to 1, 0 to 1. Let's integrate. Tell me, with respect to x first, what did you get? x cubed over 3 plus 1. xy squared. So x goes from 0 to 1 dy. This is square root of 14, 0 to 1, substitute 1. We get 1 third plus y squared dy. Integrate further, what do you get? Wake up, what do you get? 1 third y. <coughs> One third y. One three. y cubed over 3. 0 to 1. Final answer. 2 thirds squared 14. Any questions? Okay. Flux. Oops. So what did we do a while ago? We did surface integrals of functions, right? When we find surface integrals of vector fields, you know, like we had line integrals of vector fields. So now we have surface integrals of vector fields. This is called flux. Okay. Do you all do flux in physics? How do how do how do they describe flux? 
the magnetic field okay so here is the rate at which a quantity flows across a surface so i just gave an example so consider solar winds protons and electrons flowing out of the sun as they strike earth and earth is the surface it's a sphere so the rate of flow of the winds across earth is flux now to calculate flux do you remember now i'm, I'm showing you one way <laughs> that's the thing about uh, the this this course and about what we're doing now there's another way you can calculate flux just like when we did line integrals of vector fields we saw a number of ways you could have used green serum so i'm going to show you one way here of calculating flux in the next lecture you'll see another method okay so to calculate flux we need to specify an orientation for the surface upward orientation is positive orientation so for example if this is your surface mm -mm. let's say this is your surface s upward and you have upward normal sometimes it, the, the normals you know surfaces have normals so points upwards so this is called positive orientation if the normals instead are pointing downwards then you'll have negative orientation okay formulas now we have a formula for if there's a parameter parameterization of the surface so this is the flux so it's a double integral of f dot ds double integral over d of f dot the um, cross product note that here you do not find the length of the cross product because this is a dot product you're doing here okay <coughs> Now, if it's not given as a parameterization, here is the formula. Suppose the surface S is given by a graph of Z equals G of XY and S is oriented upward. The flux of F with components PQR through S above a region R is given by... So let's put some integrals here. So I, was, I don't know how come I was able to do this S and D then. I wasn't able to do it down here. Okay, so the double integral over S of F dot DS is equal to the double integral over the region R. So you do the same thing, you replace any Z, write any Z in F in terms of X and Y, times this. Now, you might be asking me, where did this vector come from? This is how, this is the formula for the normal to the surface. Sometimes... You will see this formula here written like that. This um, notation, flux written like this. So don't get confused if you see that. F dot N, DS. N is the normal to the surface. And this is the formula for the normal, right? So you find the dot product of these two. And when you find the dot product, it ends up being this formula. Why? Because don't forget that this surface, let me just write this in blue, this, I'm sorry, vector field has components P, Q, and R. And so when you find the dot product of P, Q, and R with this vector, you end up with this. So that is the formula. Okay. So I think we're only going to do two examples, and I, I think I'm only going to concentrate on the second formula, okay?
All right. Compute the flux <coughs> of the surface Z equals minus 2x minus 4y plus 1 oriented upward. And R is the triangle of vertices 0, 0, 0, 2, 1, 0. Now this triangle, we're going to draw it a little later because we can draw it now, it doesn't matter, but it will enable us to know the limits for our integral. Okay, it's a triangle, so we have to determine whether we want it to be vertically simple or horizontally simple. Okay, but let's, um, let's work out the integrand first. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, now, by the way, this, um, let me just go back up a little bit here. Where is this thing? <coughs> so I wrote, oops, I wrote G, um, the partial G respect to X here. I could have as well written DZ DX. I could have done it like that, okay? So I could have used this notation. Okay, so let's go back down. Okay, so let's start. We need to find first partials. So z equals minus 2x minus 4y plus 1. Find the first partials. Partial z with respect to x is minus 2. Partial z with respect to y is minus 4. Okay? The next thing that I am going to do is to rewrite this, the um, vector field F in terms of X and Y only. Okay? So 3XYZ, you're going to replace Z with, so you have 3X, you have Y, and you have minus 2X minus 4Y plus 1. So, the integrand, we need to find the dot product of what? So I'm not going to write out the formula again. It's quite long. But you're finding the dot product of this, the vector field with, and I'm just going to write it. It's negative partial z with respect to x, negative partial z with respect to y1. So that's the formula, okay? This is going to be your integrand. Let me see that. This is your integrand. Okay. So let's, oh, let's um, rewrite that. So this is 3xy minus 2x minus 4y plus 1 dotted with, so this is 2, 4, 1. Based on our calculations, we just calculated the partials. Okay, let's work this out. This dot product, so that is 6x plus 4y minus 2x minus 4y plus 1 which ends up being 4x plus 1. Okay, so we have our integrand. Any questions so far? We need the limits of integration now. So that's where you need to draw this triangle and determine whether you want it to be vertically or horizontally simple. I don't think it matters on that one, actually. But let's just see. Zero, 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 two, one, zero. Okay, so you are right. It does not matter. Let's make it vertically simple. 
So if we make it vertical, it's all horizontally simple anyway. We need the equation of this line. What is the equation? Minus 2x plus 2, beautiful. Okay, so we're ready. Let's set up the flux, the integral for the flux. So we have the double integral of what we just got, 4x plus 1 dy dx. What are your x limits? 0 to 1. And what are your y limits? Negative 2x plus 2. Okay, this we need to show our work for. Okay, let's do this. 0 to 1, integrate with respect to y, 4xy plus y, y goes from 0 to minus 2x plus 2 dx. This is 0 to 1. Um, 4x times minus 2x plus 2 plus minus 2x plus 2 dx. Simplify 0 to 1. I think we have a minus 8x squared. Then we have an 8x and a minus 2x, so that's a plus 6x. And there's a plus 2 dx. Integrate. That's minus 8 over 3x cubed plus 3x uh, squared plus 2x from 0 to 1 which is minus 8 thirds plus 3 plus 2. What's that? That's 7 over 3, I think. 7 over 3. Okay. Any questions before we do the last one? Okay. So the vector field is 0, 2xy. S is a part of the surface. Z equals negative y plus 1 oriented upward. And the square is between 0 <coughs> And 1, I don't know why I'm saying above the square. I have a, a, quite a few typos in this. Play, um, sorry about that. S is a part of the surface oriented upward above the square. Above the square. I think when I typed this up, I must have been a little tired. Okay, so let's start. You remember the first thing we should do? What should we do? Look at the last question and tell me what I did. The what is the first thing? The partials, the partials right? So z equals minus y plus one. What's the partial of z with respect to x? And then the partial of z with respect to y? Negative one. Okay. So we have the partials. What's the next thing? What did I do next? Before I dot, well, I can dot it with the function y right away because if you notice, the function has no z in there, right? So I have no replacing to do. So we're going to dot. Now let's remember the formula. Dot it with what? It's minus partial z with respect to x minus partial z with respect to y and 1. That's what it is, right? So we're going to have 0, 2xy dotted with 0, 1, 1. What is that? 2x plus y. Now what? set up the integral. We, we don't have to draw that. That's over a square, right? 
2x plus y dx dy 0 to 1 0 to 1 okay let's see what we have here <clears throat> with respect to x let's integrate what do you get x squared plus xy beautiful x goes from 0 to 1 substitute what do you get 1 plus y, good, dy, let's finish it up, integrate, y plus y squared over 2, 0 to 1, final answer, great, hmm? that's it for surface integrals.